So in today's episode, I wanted to talk about freelancing, entrepreneurship, that sort of thing. And some context, right? So I'm 23 years old, 24 years old this year in 2022. And I've been in the workforce for about a year at this point. So I actually joined my first company in April of 2021. And now it's basically March of 2022. So I've, I've basically got a year under my belt of sort of professional full, full-time working experience, right? And I think right now I'm in that sort of headspace where I'm still fresh. I, I'm, I'm still quite fresh to the workplace. Um, I'm still learning the ropes, so to speak. But at the same time, I've uh, what's been on my mind recently is just this curiosity and this passion to, you know, uh, figure out whether I could start my own freelancing business uh, down the line or my own entrepreneurship business down the line. Because when I think about what I necessarily want out of the future and the kind of future that I want to necessarily build for myself, I don't envision myself as you know being a senior vice president of some multinational company five years or ten years down the line. I'm sure that would be really, really cool. And speaking to colleagues, speaking to people, or at least some people, I I, I kind of get the feeling that, you know, yeah, some some people some people definitely want that goal, want to become like a really, really senior exec in a really, really established company down the line. And most likely, that's going to really pay well as well, right, um, for, for someone down the line. But when I think about what, where I want to be in the next 10 years or the next 5 years, 3 years, or even the next few years, right, I'm, I, I feel like I would want to be able to have a greater amount of control over my working hours, um, as well as a greater amount of control over what I do and, and how I go about um, building myself a livelihood, earning an income, right? And while I definitely feel like my current job, it's definitely a really, really great platform for me to learn skills, whether it be, you know, negotiation skills, client management skills, even industry-specific knowledge. I, I'm working in, a, in an FMCG company at the moment, so definitely being in that space, gives me the ability to you know just understand that industry on a level that would not have been as accessible if i were doing it externally just trying to you know um, on the outside looking in understand the industry understand that space better so i do definitely think that you know i'm, I'm really really fortunate to be in it to be where i am at the moment i also feel that you know it's it's um down the line I would definitely want to explore my own entrepreneurship platform. So, you know, seeing as it's basically the start of the new year, it's March. Well, I mean, we're we're quarter, we're almost a quarter done with the with 2022. That's how fast time flies, right? But seeing as it's still the beginning of the year, and I've never really, really delved into, um, you know, just challenging myself to start something up from scratch, right? Um, you know, obviously, I think, I, I'm not sure about you guys, and maybe let me know in the comments if you guys, uh, for, for those of you who have perhaps like started your own businesses or started your own freelancing uh, journeys before, right, or, or to a certain degree. Um, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure these fears are like quite common amongst people, but these are the fears that, that I'm going through just to let you guys know. Fears like thinking, what am I even going to necessarily do in terms of starting my own freelancing industry in, in terms of fears will people even like a, am i am i able to even create quality content or, or 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 quality services or quality products to the point that people are going to be you know actually willing to to purchase them so these are like con- questions that i've been thinking about for some time but at the same time i know that you know just through my own experiences uh, already, that I have certain like passions, I have certain passions and interests that I'm thinking about right now of of transforming them into you know potentially uh, services, services or products that I hope people will be able to benefit from. So two two passions in particular, right? Um, back during university, and maybe even tracing it back all the way into high school, right? 
from, from my high school days, I was really interested in public speaking. I got into Model United Nations, uh, debate, um, though I was not particularly good at debate, but I did do a lot of Model United uh, Nations. So I did Model UN, I did debate, and then in university, I started to do like, case competitions, competitions where you would um, be given like bis- uh, historical business problems that companies faced, and then you and your teams would be challenged to um, really analyze analyze the problems of that company and help them to develop solutions and then present those solutions to judges. So I really, really found those um, case competitions, or in particular this one case competition that I joined, uh, really, really interesting, really, really fun. Um, also particularly because um, at my root, at my core, I think I'm rather a competitive person. So uh, joining competitions, that was always, always very, uh, very, very fun for me. Um, but yeah, so one, one thing that I've noticed about myself, one passion or interest at the very least, is that I've always been very, very fond of uh, competitions. Um, and in those competitions, through, through, I guess, just reflecting a little bit, I've always been also fond about um, public speaking, about learning how to tell engaging stories, uh, learning how to structure my thoughts, structure my ideas so that they come across more succinctly, um, more more clearly, right, to the people that I'm talking to. And obviously, it's a learning process. I've um, had my ups and downs. I, I feel like whenever it comes to public speaking, it's always been, it's and, and telling stories, it's fun, especially when you can do it right. Uh, but yeah, it's it's an up and down skill for me in the sense that, you know, when you're, when you're, you've had a lot of practice in a certain skill, then maybe some of you guys can also relate to this, is that, you know, you're really, really sharp. You feel like you can do it any time, or at least at a certain period in time, you feel like you can do it to a, to a good degree, right? But then, you know, a few months down the line, you're not so sure about whether you can do it um, to the same level of degree, or you feel like your skills have deteriorated. Not sure if any of you can relate to that. Um, maybe not on public speaking, but to a different skill, but <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's how I feel in public speaking. I feel like my my skills have not necessarily um, been retained. I feel like they might have been degrade. They might have degraded um, over the last year. Um, you know, since since my last quiz competition was was quite a, quite a while back at this point. But yeah, I've always been fond about storytelling, about public speaking, and though it's a learning process in a sense that I definitely still have a lot of areas of improvement to grow in that space. I, I do feel like it's a passion point of mine to be able to do it to, uh, to a good degree and to actually you know, tell engaging stories and to weave stories um, in, in a way that's, that's fun for people and engaging for people around me. And the second passion point that I've also been quite interested in a, or I would say that the, the, the second space that really piqued my interest was design. So some context, right? I'm an economics and I'm a global studies student. So if you look at my degrees, I, <laughs> I've, I, it's not like I, I'm an art student. Um, and I think honestly, right, if you go back and then you look at some of the extracurriculars that I've done before and I, and I reflect back on, you know, the feedback that I get, <laughs> it's, um, I, I, I recall people always like mentioning my, my color choices uh, <laughs> and I feel like they could have been, you know, improved, whether it be like, you know, working an Excel spreadsheet, I feel like I, I, I might have like just gone over the top perhaps with colors or maybe my, my color choices were not necessarily the best, you know, <laughs> but um, in recent years, especially when I was in university towards the latter years, when I joined, um, when, when I started learning about the consulting space, when I started learning from people about, you know, how to structure your messages, you know, how to, how to construct PowerPoint decks so, so that they, are, they come across, you know, very, very, so that the messages within them come across clearly. Um, it's, 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 it was a really, um, I would say, it was a very, very good opportunity for me to just hone my aesthetic sense, if I can call it that. And thereafter, I remember uh, taking a, a programming course, so nothing to do with design, right? A programming course in Swift, so Apple's uh, coding language. But the one cool thing about that programming course that I actually never ended up finishing, so it was a course on Udemy that I actually you know, purchased and decided to challenge myself to do it because I was really, really interested in, in, in app design at the time. Um, but 
there was a, like a supplementary bonus course because the instructor was just that cool and so she actually had a color theory course that um, she packed into the app design course because you know to create good apps you want them to look appealing you want them to look aesthetically pleasing and so she had that color theory uh, course in there as well so um, I'm not sure how much I benefited from that at the time but at this point in time just because I feel like my color uh, if, if not necessarily just my, my, my color theory or my sense of you know color matching has improved I do feel like I have developed to a certain degree my ability to structure aesthetically pleasing PowerPoint decks um, or, or resumes or just aesthetically aesthetically pleasing documents if I can put it that way mostly in the form of PowerPoint decks or resumes that also use color and leverage on color and are still clear because they're also leveraging on the messaging philosophies on the idea structuring principles that I picked up during my time you know, learning consulting and because of those two passion points basically the the first being you know uh, about about public speaking about idea structuring that I really picked up um, and really honed throughout my, my my high school and university years as well as my interest in design theory and how I can blend necessarily both of those together I, I would I, I have been thinking actually and I would like to challenge myself to do this over the course of you know the next few months to come um, because yeah, I mean, you, you have to start somewhere. So for me, um, I was watching, I was thinking about what necessarily, what kind of business, freelance business I could do. So I think what I would want to do moving forward over the next few months is actually challenge myself to, you know, do, just do a course. Because um, I, I, I definitely have areas of improvement to learn for myself to improve my public speaking skills, my idea structuring skills, as well as my design theory. But that's not to say that, necess- that uh, you know, after years or months, um, after the experiences I've gone through, there's nothing um, that I have to teach. So, you know, I'm, I, the challenge for me, I think, is to actually just find people, find people who could genuinely benefit, who could actually benefit um, and who are keen to learn about idea structuring and public speaking, about uh, design, and, you know, find, find these people who are in need of these skills and just uh, what I want to do is just off, start offering uh, to teach these people for free. And you know, from from that point in time, because you know, I'm not really charging anyone. I'm just offering my 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 knowledge to to whatever degree it exists, and helping these people to 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 what extent I can, right? So that's I think my challenge and how I would want to begin starting up my my freelance business, so to speak. And from there, I'll be able to get feedback as to you know. Um, just I think preparing the course materials and preparing to teach people and also going through that whole process I'll be able to identify those excuse me those points in which I need to hone my skills further um, both just you know through self-reflection but also based on the feedback that I get from the people that I end up actually teaching and I think that could be a good jumping off platform for me to eventually potentially teach people and you know charge charge money for the knowledge for for the courses that I actually construct right yeah so that's sort of just the ideas that in my head that I wanted to share with you guys today I'm not so sure how helpful that is but just wanted to let you guys know what's um, what I have in mind and my idea really is to you know potentially just document the whole process um, on YouTube through these, uh, through these uh, videos perhaps whether they be like weekly or monthly just updates regarding how my thought process is proceeding and also on you know perhaps like just the, the state of where I am in terms of the whole business idea so yeah today's video is just really to let you guys know um, and to share with you guys I think um, and also to document this whole journey really about how I'm basically starting from scratch but I do know the passion areas that I have and I do know that I want to at least try to enter into this uh, freelancing space because at the end of the day when I think about what I want out of life how I want to be build my livelihood I do see it, um, that I want to be able to do it on my own terms um, not necessarily yeah to to build it to build an independent livelihood on my own terms and since i'm young since i'm still 23 24 i think the best time to do it is is now 
um, yeah and yeah I do think the best time to do it is now so yeah I mean let me know in the comments I think if you guys for, for those of you who have experience perhaps doing these kinds of things in the past it would definitely be helpful for me just so that you know I can avoid any mistakes that you guys may have run into in the past potentially or yeah if you guys have any thoughts on um, how to go about or on perhaps those of you who have tutored in the past because I haven't necessarily so that's something that I would definitely need to brush up on or those of you who have put courses together that would be just interesting to talk with you guys and hear from you guys your experiences as well but yeah that's all from me today this will sort of be a vlog whether it be weekly or monthly just to document my whole process and hopefully you know it's it's a process that will teach me a lot of things along the way and will hopefully be a very very productive and um, fruitful one but that's it from me um, have a good have a good have a great day you guys and take care and also to all of you guys who are starting out your who, who are really keen to start out your own uh, businesses or side hustles then yeah uh, let me know in the comments what, what you guys are into right now okay that but yeah that's it <laughs> take care you guys